Jesus healed you today. A very little, Laura, literally a very warm welcome here in the Netherlands. For those watching from Asia and different hot nations like Africa, maybe you're saying, oh, why is he saying hot? Well, today is a very hot day, our first tropical day of the year, 30 degrees. For some of you, you're laughing because probably it's almost every day like that. Oh, what a day, what a beautiful, beautiful start. And uh, I just love the start of this song. We just heard when you saw the Myanmar uh, pictures of the thousands of people and we were singing the song like a rushing wind. And that's what we do believe that in this season where things are so different that God will come like a rushing wind. And even right now where you're watching, we pray that your village, that your city, that the area you're watching from will be touched like a rushing wind by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the midst of the lockdowns and the situation I'm so happy that I could fly today I even though I even I don't like flying but it, I was able to travel and I uh, just arrived from Switzerland where I had an amazing time with my twin brother Jean-Luc Tarcel a very anointed man of God and it's such an honor to walk with him and seeing thousands of people getting saved and you know when I was traveling today flying over Europe there was this sense that the earth is shaking there's, there's something happening in the spirit that has to do with the beginning of the last days. What has to do with the thousands of people, they heard the sound of revival. They heard the sound of revival. They saw in the spirit the cloud. And I do believe that this generation, this generation is going to see the fulfillment of many unfulfilled promises. We want to welcome you to Harvest Fields International. It's such an honor that you are tuning in on this Sunday. And that you're willing to, to open up your home, not just for a great speaker or a great worship band, but for the presence of the Lord. And yes, it's true. We, we invite worship teams who are full of the Holy Spirit. They carry the sound of revival. And we pray, we pray that this time together, will be a life-changing time. Thank you for watching. Laurie, are you willing to pray with us this afternoon? Thank you, Jesus, for our International Harvest family. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that just tuned in. And we pray, Lord. Lord, we invite you. We invite you here in this service. Sweet Holy Spirit, like Matt just said, like that rushing wind, Lord, we invite you again to invade this service in Jesus' name. Lord, and I pray that that sound, that sound that's being heard across the nation, across the continent, Lord, I pray that everyone who's watching, Lord, that that sound is going to be internalized, that you're going to start to feel it beat within you. And Lord, we just proclaim it again, that every nation shall be saved, Lord. Europe shall be saved. Lord, but also Africa shall be saved. The U.S. shall be saved. Jesus, Asia shall be saved. Lord, wherever you're watching from, I pray that you will, you will feel that sound coming in stronger and stronger. And like, like Tom said last week also, we, we proclaim over you that 100% healing 
in the name of Jesus if you're watching today also and you, you're sick or you have a disease or an illness we pray over you right now that 100% healing in the name of Jesus we want to continue in the flow we left off last week Lord thank you that everything that has been proclaimed and preached Lord, that it's continuing into your hearts, in our hearts, in our lives. And we just release it again. Lord, and we give you this service. We give you this time. We give you our hearts. Lord, and we welcome you. We welcome you. In Jesus' name. Let's worship. Amen. I want to invite the worship team to come on the platform. And we're going to enter into this beautiful presence of the Lord. And, and today we have Siba Slachter in our midst who's going to give a, a power preaching of a 10 minute prophetic in a prophetic inside of you know an apostolic inside of what the lord is doing and then i have a short message about a key for revival i really believe the lord is giving keys these days for revival in the presence of the lord so again thank you let us know where you're watching from right now from which nation we, we do pray for you in jesus mighty name enjoy the worship
Good. 
tried so hard to see it took me so long to believe it you chose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve Take the broken things, he raised them to glory. You are my champion, giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, I am who you say I am. You cry.
to Yeah, just, just at your home, just, just for the coming minute, maybe the band can, can stay with me. Just lift up your voice. I, I really believe there's like this, this spiritually language that the Lord wants to give to some of you. You never probably spoke, spoke in tongues, and it's very easy. You know, Jesus, he's, he's the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist, the nephew of Jesus, said, Clearly, the one who comes after me, I'm not even worth to, to put on his shoes. He is the baptizer of fire and the Holy Spirit. And, and, and this is the vision, this is God's dream. Every person on this earth filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just a believer, but filled with the Holy Spirit. Imagine that every believer is filled with the Holy Spirit. So at home, just if you never spoke in this language, listen, you're missing something in your life. Where you're not baptized with the fire and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter in which denomination you come from. This is not just for the Pentecost people. It's for everyone with their heart. It's for everyone what is created as a human is made to speak and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So are you ready? <laughs> so the only thing you have to do right now is very easy. You just, you know. It's like when you get a gift, you are in receive mode. It's not like you are, you are sour like a lemon right now and trying very hard. I mean, just be very relaxed. Because God is a father and he wants to give you a gift. Don't strive for this. Just receive the gift right now. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for this beautiful gift. And Holy Spirit, I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, to baptize every person watching every person watching right now with the fire the power and the Holy Spirit and just right now I lose your tongue <laughs> in Jesus name and you know it's a safe place your home I hope your home you can say it's a safe place maybe no one is watching and I ask you just to pray after me E ala la la maye araba koyete sheke be ke raba ke rebe ke ke sheke be keep 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 singing keep talking e raba ke anda la 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 maye sheke re ke te rebe araba ke te ke de de be sheke re ke de yeah you're good keep going e raba ka ra ke sheke re ke te de be and so Lord we release the fire and the power of your beautiful wonderful sweet Holy Spirit we thank you Jesus that you baptized many of us today in Jesus name and I challenge you it's like baby baby language when you when you experience this for the first time let us know just on the chat or through email info at harvestfieldsinternational.com 
And you know, it's like it's it's like with baby language. It's like you have to you have to develop this language every day. I, I ask you every day, set apart at least speak in tongues in your, in your time with the Lord five minutes every day and build it up maybe to even an hour per day just speaking in tongues it's building up your faith it's building up stuff it's a heavenly language it's the language the angels are speaking <laughs> amen amen well I feel like we can continue for hours like this this is good amen amen but we also believe in releasing the word so everything we did the last 35 minutes was we were singing songs and praises it attracts heaven it attracts the supernatural but also when we speak the word when we speak and proclaim the word and his truth over you it sets stuff free in the spirit so it's for me a huge honor to invite Siba Slachter to the platform you saw him more often they are uh, they are part of the beautiful family the global family all around the world they carrying revival and there is such an apostolic anointing on his life and he's married with Volker she has an amazing prophetic voice and I'm so happy uh, Siba that you're here with us today amen and this time not pu purple hair <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good morning everybody um, I first thing I think I want to start with the scripture of Matthew 6 verse 19 and verse 20 I think it is on the screen do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break and steal but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal, because where your treasure is, there will also be your heart. My wife had an encounter this week, and when we speak with the Lord, we ask the Lord, what do you want to that we have to share this day for you? And while she was listening, the Lord spoke to her, and I will read it for you. Oh, my dear child, this is the language God wants to speak to you too. Oh, my dear child, I long for every child of mine to reach out for everything. So every child for everything. Everything I offer them and desire to give them. Heaven is full of treasures. And they are there for the taking. But there are so few who want to dig up, unpack, and to distribute these treasures. I long to make my kingdom visible, but I need my children to bring it in practice. Those who want more will receive more. I will, if you strength out for everything, you will receive everything. Don't settle for less, because the moth will digest the earthly. And if you look at what the mud is doing or a virus is doing, a mud eats all your clothes. So I become naked. I lost everything. But a virus can digest everything, can destroy your whole economy. But if you're treasure in heaven, we have nothing to fear because there is a treasure in heaven. And God showed me this, this last three weeks, three things three keys for the awakening. It's so nice that when God gives my wife a word and it is confirmed with what God spoke already to me. So God said, digging, digging the wells, I want to to dig it up, unpack and to distribute three things. Digging up the wells. If I want to start up to digging a well, I have to sit on my knees and I have to dig up the wells. So the starting point is, I think, for the awakening, we should be on our knees. And we are standing here right now under the anointing and the mandates of our forefathers and for her mothers and what they did spiritual in our lives and what they did in Europe and in America and all over the globe. And God is calling us in this time of hour that we have to dig up the wells from before. So if you see a fight all over the world of our inheritance and they're pulling down all the statues, that's also an attack on our heritage. 
And that's the reason why God is saying now we have to dig up our wells. And it's the same God who gives the great awakening, but also who gives a lot of revivals, and he wants to do it again. So that's the reason why we have to dig up. But God is ready now. This is the time. So we said it before, Europe shall be safe, but God is now spoken. This is the time. This is the time. I will lose revival fires and miracles to my sons and daughters. This is the starting point. And God is releasing the spirit of healing. And I saw all over the globe, John G. Lakes walking all over the world. And they were healing people. And I saw cities free from any disease. All cities free from any disease. And I saw floods speak to floods. And I saw Swiss. And I saw the Netherlands. And I saw the river flowing from the Netherlands to Swiss. And God is speaking to me. The Holy Spirit is speaking to the Holy Spirit from the Netherlands to Swiss. And all the lands in between will be saved. And you will see a revival. As God is saying, from, I'm speaking to the mountains and it's coming back in between. And God spoke to me during in the beginning of the night to Jean-Luc Trachel. So I have a specific word for Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc, God is telling me that you digged up the wells of the healing all over the Europe. You dig the wells of the healing anointing over Europe. And you will see miracles after miracles. And I saw your son behind you. And you will see your heritage. You will see it in your son. But you will see it bigger than you have ever seen it before. And I mean the son because I saw a picture and I don't know the name, but I saw your son, your son you brought to the Netherlands with Benny Hinn. That's the son what I mean. But God showed me another thing. And he said, okay, what the enemy plans for your, in your life, these days, in these hours, this year, what he plans, he, he plans to do in your life, I will not forget. I will not forget because I'm a righteous God. And I will answer the enemy with miracles after miracles, after miracles, after miracles. So I give healing, 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 healing. So we have to claim our historical inheritance through prophetic intercession. That's what he did. God showed me that this revival so not for, is not coming for the next generation, but for this generation. I see so many people doubting the awakening, we got us saying, this is the time, this is the time. And all the seeds planted by our forefathers, this is the time that we will see for this generation what God wants to do. So we have to put our, on our knees and we have to heal our lands. But the second thing, that is what we already did. We brought it in practice because that is in pack. So there are a lot of trashes. And we have to unpack. But the best way to unpack it is only with the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, and we invited you already just to, uh, to, uh, to speak in tongues, but you need the Holy Spirit to unpack everything. I see so many children, God showed me, who are not able to unpack all the presence of the heavenlies. And then God showed me a picture and I know you can show the picture, and he showed me a picture of a Dutch game who was for many years on the television. And you don't know that if you're from abroad, but it was a specific game on the, on the television. And uh, there's a people sitting on the platform, and then you have to put your arms in, in, um, above you, and you have to look upstairs, and then you see all kinds of sticks. Now suddenly there is a zoom and there's a tone, and then when the tone is, then suddenly a stick is falling down. And then you have to grab it, suddenly, you have to grab it. And God is saying to me, this is the picture what I'm doing in this time. And so many people are so distracted, but you need focus like this person on this game. But if we stay focused in this hour, and we have to focus and suddenly you will hear a sound of heaven 
and he will pour out all the things and then you have to grab it you have to grab it the final man size it by force so stay focused name it proclaim it and possess it that's so important and the third thing that God showed me is distribute it and if you look at the tsunami and that's the coming of a tsunami of awakening if you look at the sea and when the tides are coming then the sea is pulling back and this hour we are pulled back as church we are pulled back but if you pull back you see everything on the, on, the, on the sand you can see everything because if it is pulled back so this is the time that God is saying I will show everything and everything what is not good will show up and it will be opened and it will be you will see it so that's the reason why it is shaken because a tsunami always starts with a shaking but there's also a second thing so in this time we see all kinds of things pull up but the second thing we have to learn is that we are not distracted with all these things. But as church, we have to re we realize that we have to rearrange the troops in this period. We have to work on unity. We have the wounded people has to be healed. Because otherwise, otherwise we are not ready. So this time we are pulled back. It's just needed for us to be prepared for the upcoming awakening. So in this hour of upcoming tsunami, of revival, we'll see that everything will be shaken. Everything will be attacked. Our heritage will be attacked. Our Christian roots will be attacked. Our history will be attacked. But we will stand. We will stand. We will stand. So don't be distracted. And God will come back like the tsunami. And he will come back. And he will come back with the biggest wave ever seen in history of awakening. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, amen. I'm very, I'm very shakaraba. You know what? I really, I really thank you so much, uh, Pastor Siba, for sharing the word with us. To be honest, I was sitting and I thought by myself, actually, I don't have to preach anymore. There's, yeah, no, there is so much what you said in 10 minutes. Thank you so much. I think you, you, you really unwrapped a lot of keys. And uh, what an uh, incredible gift Siva is to the body of Christ with his beautiful wife, Volker. Wow. Well, it's for me an honor before I'm going to share the word as well with you today. Um, in really in light of the harvest, in light of the awakening. And it's a subject what's not that much talked about. And uh, the Lord revealed me years ago that this is also one of the keys for revival and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And you really don't want to miss this. Before we're going to do that, I really want to ask you and challenge you and pray with you to sow a gift of faith uh, and a, a seed of, of finances into Harvest Fields International. We're so happy with the say around hundred hundred dollars what comes in every service of course that's that's really enough to cover uh, uh, the services here but we, we really do believe because we are in the start in the beginning it's growing more and more people are getting involved uh, that uh, we are finding also very easy ways for you to give we, we do understand that when you are brought it's, it's hard to give but again we want to make it possible right now we want to give you different opportunities to sow into harvest fields international you're not sowing into salaries, you're sowing literally in making this broadcast available. And we have big plans. Our biggest desire is to have in every nation, and you heard it right, in every nation. Because that's where the contacts are, that's where the networks are. But in every nation we want to have homes. Homes of Harvest Fields International who open up their homes, watching the broadcast, starting leadership training, Zoom calls, and really reaching your area. One of the examples, and I said it the last few weeks, is Rajkumar. He's watching from India. Rajkumar, thank you for watching uh, this, this broadcast. And Rajkumar decided to use his channel, Ganta TV, uh, to broadcast this Harvest Field International into India. And so we have behind Rajkumar, who's taking care of hundreds of orphans. Like, it's, it's an amazing ministry. It's been there several times, and 
in Pima Farum. Actually, we did one there, one of the biggest crusades. <laughs> uh, one night, we, like 112,000 people showed up. It was fantastic. A huge area there. But Rajkumar, I want to say, I'm so proud of you that uh, you really risk your life for Jesus. And so there are many other places like Qatar, South America, Siberia, Russia, where we really want to open up homes and uh, start building this online community. So, so with us today. Lord, I ask you right now to, to really speak to our hearts. Lord, what we are able to give. Give us as team creativities and creative ways, Lord, to make it possible for the people abroad to give. Lord, if in Africa they cannot give chicken, because it's really serious, people give chicken there, that's what they have. But in the, in the end, Lord, we say you are the provider. And Lord, thank you for speaking to different people. And maybe you're watching right now, you want actually to sponsor the broadcast. It would be great. Just email us at info at harvestfieldsinternational.com. In Jesus' name. And so I, I'll, I'll try to be quiet for like 30 seconds. And then uh, on your screen, you can, you can see different ways. There's a bank account, there's PayPal, there's a code where you can actually scan. And then um, you can give. And thank you so much for your seed you're sowing today in this ministry to share the gospel of Jesus Christ around the earth. Let's move touching impact the nations together in Jesus' name. for a very long time. Love you, man. It's awesome to have you here. 1996, what a year. I was still a young man with a six pack and beautiful, I'm a little bit older right now. And here I was as a maritime officer. I was a little, as a little boy, I dreamed to be a maritime officer. And even though my my skills at, at school were not, not that high. The director of the school, they, he said to me, man, I really believe in you. I, I give you this opportunity. I wanted to be a maritime officer and sail the world on the ship. After five years study in Rotterdam, I became one of, the, one of the youngest maritime officers, just 19 years old. And I start to sail. And in 1996, I came with a beautiful ship called Anastasis from Mercy Ship. It was part of Youth in the Mission at that time. And I was a maritime officer on that ship together with the crew. We arrived at Cape Town, South Africa, and we had to go into a dry dock. So for a longer time, we had to stay there. And after three weeks, finally, it was my, my turn to have a free day. It was hard work, seven days a week. It was my turn to get off the ship. And I still remember that day. So I said to my friend, who was an officer as well, I said, let's go into town and let's have some fun. And while we were driving with the taxi, we drove through the Elizabeth Street and on the left side, you had the, 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 the white people and the, the, the mansions, like huge churches. I've never saw such beautiful churches, palm trees. And that was not that, so much filled with the Holy Spirit at that time. I was a believer, I followed the Lord, but I didn't know what my calling was. And you know, I wanted to be a captain, make money and make, make life. But on the right side, what I never saw in my life, I saw the slum areas. And between the slum area and the street of the rich people was less than 20 meters. Couldn't believe it. Like the contrast was like crazy, literally crazy. I was so shocked by it that I asked the driver to stop and he didn't want to stop. I said, no, please sir, I pay you to stop right now. 
And I said, I want to go to the right. He said, no, 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 sorry. This is very dangerous. You cannot go there. I said, no, I feel I, feel I have to go to the right. He said, sorry, sir, even the police is not coming in this slum area. It's very dangerous. Probably you get killed because you're a Mzungu. You're a white person and you don't speak the Kosa language. I said, I don't care. I, I want to go in that place. And it was a, it was a, a fantastic, I say, trap from the Lord. I, I was obedient. When I look back, it was the Holy Spirit. It was so strong. I had such a strong feeling to go to the right. To make a long story short, I went to the right. I spent the whole day there. And I just wept. I just wept. Every five minutes, I walked into the slum area. I wept. The, the smell of the, of the poor, the, the desperate, the desperation into the eyes. I've never saw something like that. And I looked to the left. I saw these huge buildings, the, the mansion churches, and the white people. I, I couldn't believe the contrast. Literally, people were dying in that slum area visiting some people in the slum areas and people were dying from cancer and the smell of death was there i came i came home to the ship and i caught my father i said dad listen this happened to me that night a prophet from holland peter helms never heard about this guy this is 1996 peter helms came to the ship and he started to prophesy over my life he said there comes a day that you are going all around the world and you're going to see revival. You're going to see great and beautiful things. But the Lord is first going to touch your heart for the orphans, the widows, and the poor. Because that's the key to the revival. I didn't understand it at all. And after three weeks sailing, we went back. And, and after the, the dry dock, we started to sail back to Europe. And, but something was, was knocking on my, on, on my heart. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't think clear anymore. I, couldn't only, I could only think about what I saw in the slum. I went back and I said to my father and my mom, when my time was finished at the Anastasis, I said, Mom, Dad, I think I, can con I cannot continue with my life to be a maritime officer. Something happened in my heart. And two years later, I had to wait for two years. Two years later, I, I woke up and my pillow was wet from crying. I never had that experience. I was very concerned. I was like, what happened last night? And tears start running over my cheek. I, I put on the news and we heard about a war in Kosovo in 1999, beginning 1999. And I remember that our vice president said on the, on the television that because of the, the crisis in Kosovo, one million refugees were there in our little town, Ermelo, where I still live. We took 3,000 refugees. Holland took 3,000 refugees from that war zone. And the Lord spoke to my heart. The reason I let you cry in the night, because this is your day that I'm going to move your heart with compassion. And the tears you cried in the night were not your tears, were my tears. He said it clearly. So on my bike, I, I went to Ermelo and they were building this big tent. A week later, 3,000 refugees came. I never forget it. Never ever forget it. I signed myself up as a volunteer and give soup and start washing the clothes of the widows and the children with the blood and the mud of the big flea of three weeks. And every day when I start to sleep, I couldn't sleep. I was weeping and weeping and weeping. And God said, Matt, for the coming three weeks, I give you every night, I give you in your sleep scriptures from the Bible in the Old and the New Testament. And this, these scriptures are keys. And I ask you to, to proclaim these keys to the world. Because this is a subject what's not preached about in the church that much. This was back in the 1990s. To make a long story short, for three weeks every night, the Lord woke me up. I couldn't sleep and then I slept. And then when I slept, the Lord gave me scriptures. I still have the, the notes. And when I go back, I realize there are more than 500 scriptures in Old and New Testament connected with the subject of orphans, widows, and the poor connected to the revival. And then the Lord asked me something very difficult. He said, Matt, are you willing to leave your job as a maritime officer behind? And are you willing 
to spend your life to the poor, the broken. I said, yes, Lord, here I am, send me. My father, my mother blessed me. And when the war was over, not really over, but when, when the United Nations came in and the refugees were not even ready to go back, I met a great friend who was leading Derek Prince Ministries. And in September 1999, Derek Prince received a vision about God's heart for revival in the area of orphans, widows, and the poor. And Supernatural reconnected and he asked me to go for him to Kosovo. And so he provided a, a car. And together with organization The Bridge and Derek Prince Ministries, there I went. Very young age. Not much experience. Not ready to go into a war zone. I cannot describe you the details and I will not do it. But what I saw was like horrific. After three days driving with our Mitsubishi, we ended up in the city of Jakova, what means city of blood. Hundreds of men were killed. This week, I showed for my first time to my children the pictures of that city in that time. 85% was destroyed. There was pain. There was desperation. I couldn't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because the ones who killed that group of people were Orthodox Christians. And so I found myself the bodies of the men who were killed and they, they put the cross of Jesus into the men before they killed them. And together with my great friend Ingrid von Diest, we, we were there at the mass crates. We, we, we saw hundreds of things we actually didn't want to see we still smell it horrific horrific but there i learned lessons i never forget it changed my life and after taking care of the poor the orphans and the widows that's what we literally did every day we're visiting families for the first year it was very hard every day we were confronted with death, with pain, with widows who came back and their husband was killed, their houses were destroyed. I had to drive through the minefields and I had to take care of children who died on mines. My car became the funeral car of the village. Crazy situation. And after a year, I was so desperate, so done with the smell of death, so done with the, the death and the the depression of the people. I said, God, why did you send me here? I want to see revival. I want to see souls. And God said, Matt, today is the day. Because for a year you took care of the orphans and the widows with even saying my word. But you showed compassion because that's me. You gave bread because every day we gave bread to the poor, to the widow and the orphan. And that day, seven Muslim guys who worked with me in the bakery because we woke up in the morning and we, we, we made bread for 600 families came to Jesus supernatural a day later gold started to appear in my home I never heard about that stuff I've never been in Toronto I, I didn't know what was going on but gold started to appear the glory of God came in my house my house was surrounded surrounded by three mosques and God said I want that you build a center for revival here that's what we did we started to build a center for revival and revival broke out until this day every week every month with testimonies of people coming to jesus widows start to be leaders start to lead home groups crazy miracles start to happen and we saw an outbreak of the holy spirit and today i want to give you a message a message what normally takes three hours in africa i'm allowed to do that in holland i'm not too allowed to do it and since we are now in corona you can put it on pause <laughs> or watch it another time no it's, I'm joking I, I will not preach for, for, for three hours but normally it takes me three hours to go through all the scriptures so I give you a, in a nutshell a 25 minute preaching about Old and New Testament about a revelation God is giving to you today God's heart for the orphan God's heart for the widow it's amazing what the Bible says, and I want to read with you Isaiah 58, verse 6 to 11. This is the kind of fast I am after. To break the chain of injustice. There's so much injustice going on in the world. Get rid of 
exploitation in the, in the workplace and free the oppressed. This is God's heart. Everything we say right now has to do with the character of God. He wants to cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you is this, sharing your food with the hungry. I give you some very practical revival tools. Inviting the homeless poor into your homes. Putting clothes on a shivering ill clad. Being available, available to your own families. So many of us, we're not available. We're so busy with our own lives. We're so selfish that we forget our own families. Your grandmother, your grandfather who became a widower. Do this. It's amazing. He said, do this. Free the oppressed. Feed the hungry. Open your homes for the homeless. Do this and the lights will turn on. And your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory. We talk about this all the time. From glory to glory. Lord, we want your glory. We want your presence. If you do this, you're going to see the glory. It's not me I'm saying it. It's in the Bible. The God of glory. He will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. What an amazing testimony. What an amazing promise. If you take care of the poor, the orphan, the oppressed, your prayers will be answered. You call out for help and I will say, here I am. If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourself to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shattered lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. What an amazing promise. I will always show you where to go. I will give you a full life in the emptiest of places. Firm muscles, strong bones. You will be like a well-watered garden. A spring that never runs dry. This is God. If we take care of the oppressed, the poor, the families who are in need, God says all these incredible things. It's so easy. Psalm 68 verse 5, this is a corrector of God. He says, I am a father of orphans. I am a champion of widows. We just were singing this song. You are my champion. But God says, I am a father for the orphans. I am a champion for the widows. A God is God in his holy house. Psalm 103 verse 6, God makes everything comes out right. He put victims back on their feet. That's my God. There are millions of victims right now around the world. And if you're watching, you are a victim, a refugee. I talk to you. God's heart is for you. And He wants to put you on your feet. It's even so in the, in the whole Bible. Everything in the law of Moses was about the poor. We, we read it in... Leviticus 19 verse 9 to 10, when you harvest your land, we talk about harvest, we think, we talk about soul. But in this case, he says, when you harvest your land, don't harvest right up to the edges of your field or gather the gleanings from the harvest. Don't strip your vineyard bare or go back and pick up the fallen grapes. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner, foreigner because I am God, your God. I am your God, your God. Without without saying, like actually saying no discussion about this. I am your God, so listen, obey this. It's already in the law. That's God's heart. He just wanted to make sure that the Israelites were taking care of the poor, the needy. We don't have time to go through everything, but like you, you can read it in uh, Deuteronomium 14 verse 28 and 29, the same story about bringing the harvest, the tenth of the harvest to the orphans, the poor, the widower. One of the, the Bible heroes of faith besides David and Isaiah is Job for me. I mean, Job was in this situation, he almost lost everything and he got everything back. And what an amazing man, what an amazing man. Job is so amazing story. And the reason he was in, in the end of his life so blessed and he experienced this incredible breakthrough of all the suffering was because he did something very important. And I will read it in Psalm, sorry, in Job 29 verse 11. It says, people who know me spoke well of me. 
My reputation went ahead of me. I was known for helping people in trouble and standing up for those who were down on their luck. The dying blessed me and the bereaved were cheered by my visits. All my dealings with people were good. I was known for being fair to everyone I met. And then Job said, I was eyes to the blind and I feed the lame. I was a father to the needy and a champion of abused aliens. And then Job 31, two chapters further, it's an amazing statement what rocked my world when I was reading this. He made a statement what is so radical, what is so powerful. Then Job says, if I have ignored the needs to the poor, turned my back on the, on the, on the, on the people, take care of my own needs and fed my own face, wasn't my home always open to them? Weren't they always welcome at my table? Have I ever left a poor family shivering in the cold when they had no warm clothes? Didn't the poor bless me when they saw me coming, knowing I brought coats for my closet? If I've ever used my strength and influence to take advantage of the unfortunate, go ahead, break both of my arms. Cut off all my fingers. With other words, he's saying, if I didn't take care of the poor, if I didn't take care of those in need, the orphans and the widow, if I had five closets full of clothes and I knew that my neighbor was in need, then he actually says, break off my, my arm and cut off my fingers. That's an amazing statement. The reason Job was so righteous, so blessed, it's because he took care of the poor. He made his life around being a blessing to the broken and the needy. For me, one of a revelation was Ezekiel 16 verse 49. We know that the story about Sodom and Gomorrah. When people come to Amsterdam, I hear it many times. They say, oh, you know, Amsterdam is like Sodom and Gomorrah. I said, what do you mean? You know, the first time I heard it, I didn't know what, what they meant. They said, well, you know, it's like the prostitutes and the red light district and da 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 And when we think about Sodom and Gomorrah, especially for the older generation, we think about, you know, it's sin, it's, it's the homosexuals, the prostitutes and the adulteries and, and everything what I just said, it's so not in line with how God sees us and wants us. I really, I really, I really believe, you know, the, going through all that stuff is, is wrong, it's sin. But the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, what I believe, was not the adultery or the idolatry. The sin of, Gomorrah, of Sodom and Gomorrah, we read in Ezekiel 16 verse 49, the sin of your sister Sodom was this, she lived with her daughters in the lap of luxury. They lived a luxury life. We read that they were proud and lazy. And then it says they ignored the oppressed and the poor. And I came to this radical conclusion that the biggest sin we can do, it's not adultery and it's not good, don't do it. It's not bowing before other idols, don't do it because Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. But the biggest problem God has in the whole Bible in Old and New Testament is this sin, doing nothing. Doing nothing. The biggest sin you and me can do when we are full of the Holy Spirit, when we know the Lord, is doing nothing. I don't talk about resting. I don't talk about sometimes in life you hide, right? I don't talk about that seasons. I talk about a lifestyle of laziness. I talk about the lifestyle of living in luxury and closing your eyes to the poor, the broken and the needy. That's what the Bible tells us here. Are you still with me? I just want to give you some radical keys. I want to help you. It says in Proverbs 19 verse 17, mercy to the needy is a loan to God. It's amazing. So if you show mercy to the needy, you give a loan to God. And God says, 
and God pays back those loans in full. I said many times, because it's 25 years ago when we started our project Hero. We, we feed and help for 25 years, every day, 500 children and widows, every day. I said, as long as I live, and as long as, as I'm pastor of this church, and I will be pastor of this church until the Lord brings me home. We will not put any water by the wine. We will take care of the orphans, the widows, and the poor. And the reason we are blessed, what I believe, and I believe it's all grace, is because we take care of the poor. It's, it's God's heartbeat. It's God's heart. He pays back these loans in full. Proverbs 21 verse 13. If you stop your ears to the cries of the poor, your cries will go unheard and unanswered. What a statement. It's in the Bible. And I love to turn it around. If you start your ears to open up to the cries of the poor, your cries will go heard and answered. Proverbs 28 verse 27, be generous to the poor. You will never go hungry. What a statement. Shut your eyes to their needs and run a countless of curses. Oh, now you say, okay, man, now this is going too far. So actually, are you saying that if, you're, if, I'm, not going, if I'm not taking care of the poor, I shut my eyes and my, my ears to the need that, 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 that I'm cursed? It could be. It could be. It could be. And maybe you say, but, but, but Matt, I don't understand that. This is, this is, old, this is Old Testament. And again, I'm a, I love grace. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't believe we have to work for grace. The grace is that Jesus died for you and me, and now He gave us the responsibility when He went to heaven to bring heaven on earth. And how to do that is to open our ears and eyes to the needy and the poor and start being a Christian in action. We saw the most major deliverances when we took people to the slum areas, just right there. I don't say you are cursed if you're not taking care of the poor. I'm not saying that, but it could be. It says in Luke 3 verse 8, because of time, let's go really to the New Testament. Because, you know, I, I hear you thinking, well, it's all it's Old Testament. And it could be legalistic preaching. And I just want to tell you the truth, what I read in the Bible. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, Jesus is saying, worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father, or say until you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now it says, and now also the X, the X, is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bring not forth good fruit, is who hewn down and cast into the fire. That's harsh words. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? And he answered and said unto them, he, so this is, this is the answer. This is, this is a crazy answer. It doesn't say you have to pray, you fast, and, and, and do Bible schools, and they're all good. They're all part of your Christian lifestyle. But this answer, the X is at the root. You have to bear good fruit. And if you don't bear good fruit, it's better you, that, that the tree is put in the fire. Of course, I would say, what, what in the world do I have to do? This is the answer. He that have he that have two coats, let him impart to him that had known, and that, and he that had meat, let him do likewise. Incredible. So simple. So simple. We all can do this. We all can do this. We all can be that tree planted on the water. We bear fruit every month by open up our ears and eyes to the needy and the poor. Luke 14, verse 12 to 14. And then Jesus turned to the host. The next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and family and rich neighbors. The kind of people who will return 
the favor. Invite some people who never get invited out. The misfits from the wrong sides of the tracks. And you will be and experience a blessing. Jesus is saying this. They won't be able to return the favor, but the favor will be returned. Oh, how it will be returned at the resurrection of God's people. Three more scriptures. Because it goes a little bit further. I still hope you hang in there. <laughs> The scripture I'm going to read with you right now is my most hardest chapter in the whole Bible. Because there's a very thin line. Because you can feel condemned or you can feel convicted. If you feel condemned, it's not from the Lord. Okay? Because Satan always condemns people. But the Holy Spirit wants to convict us. And, and everything Jesus is saying is not with a tone of condemnation, but with conviction. Because this is his heart. His heart is so towards the needy, the poor, the broken, the homeless, the refugee, the one in need. 500 scriptures in Old and New Testament pointed to this group of people. And then we arrive at Matthew 25. Crazy story. I don't know if I can say that, but I just said it. Just a crazy story, like how in the world? Okay, when, we fi when he finally arrives, blazing a beauty, and all his angels with him, the Son of Man, the big day, will take his place on his glorious throne. Then all the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort the people out. Much as a shepherd sort out sheep and goats, putting sheep to his right and goats to his left. And then the king will say to the right, enter, you who are blessed by my father blessed take what's coming to you in this kingdom it has been ready for you since the world's foundation and and, and here's why I was hungry and you fed me I'm an evangelist as well pastoring evangelist I, I'm I, I'm not reading you brought millions of people to Jesus even though it's very important we do that but it's true in the feeding of the poor. It's true we are compassionate about the needy, about our families. People come to Christ. I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. And then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and came to you? And then the king will say, I'm telling you the truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. And then the difficult part. This is so difficult. But it's the word. Then he will turn to the goats, the one on his left, and say, get out, worthless goats. This is Jesus saying, right? You're good for nothing but the fires of hell. And why? Why? Why did Jesus say that? Because I was hungry and you gave me no meal. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was homeless and you gave me no bed. I was shivering and you gave me no clothes. Sick and in prison and you never visit me. Then those goats are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or homeless or shivering or sick or in prison that didn't help? And he'll answer them, I'm telling, I'm telling you, whenever you fail to do one of these things to someone who was being overlooked or ignored, it was me, you failed to do it to me. Then those goats will be herded to the eternal doom with the sheep of their eternal reward. When I read this one, and connected with all these other 500 scriptures, it was very clear to me that this message needed to be preached all over the world. Actually, Jesus is saying, if you know me, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and if you choose a lifestyle of just living for yourself, that's your biggest problem and that's your biggest sin. 
Because I gave you the keys. I gave you my life. I gave you the blood. I gave you the answer. The reason you are on this earth is to bring my kingdom on heaven. The kingdom of God here. And I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. Because this message can change your life. I have so much testimonies from people who heard this message and they felt a little bit like, ah. But then actually they start doing it. And I was, this is 15 years ago, I was in a conference and I was preaching this message. And normally when I preach this message, and it normally happens when we are with, with say, you know, 1,000 people, 500 people, 10,000 people, at least 50% start to feel the Holy Spirit on it. It happened so many times in my early days when people start to run forward. Like I didn't even had to do an invitation because it was like holiness. It was like holy ground. This is a holy message. And they gave their life to, to the poor, the broken, the needy. At one conference I came back four years later and two people came to me and, and you know, they said, can you please pray again for compassion for the lost? And you know, four years ago we had this incredible experience and I said, but what did you do in these four years? Because you can cry, but your crying without action is not moving the heart of God. It's just a nice experience. Again, you live for yourself. And he said, well, you know, we're still waiting on the Lord. Which, which direction? I said, well, I'm not going to pray for you. I'm so sorry. I don't feel to pray for you at all. I would love to pray for you, but I do, I, I do pray for you if you just did something about the compassion you received. Because the churches in the West are full of people who are spiritually overweighted. They eat, they eat, they eat. They're unhappy, they want more. They eat, they're unhappy. But on the moment you don't do something with the mana you receive from the Lord. Of course, I believe in inner healing and all that stuff. But you know what? I came to the conclusion, on the moment you start to give yourself to other people, your own wounds are getting healed so many times. And yes, we need counseling, we need, we need shepherds, we need all the, it's, 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 it's all part of the body. But there's a key in this. I know certain wounds will not heal until you start to give yourself to the poor, the broken and the needy. That's your breakthrough. And you know what happened? You fix your eyes not on your own problems anymore. <laughs> you fix your eyes on Jesus. And you start to give. Maybe you have a little bit of oil, but start to multiply. We all need inner healing. But some people, they, they, they believe they have to be in inner healing for 35 years. It's a freaking lie. Stop, stop thinking that. Stop thinking that. Just live life. Yes, you need inner healing. But in the process of inner healing, there's no excuse of not being there for another person. Amen, man. Almost there. Isaiah 61, verse 1. Announce freedom to all the captives. The spirit of the God, the master is on me. Because God anointed me and he sent me, he sent you to preach the good news to the poor. To heal the brokenhearted. The first thing Jesus said after he came out of the desert. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. To preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the brokenhearted. Announce freedom to all the captives and release all prisoners. And I'm going to end with James 1 verse 27. This is the whole message in a nutshell. One scripture changed my life. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Are you ready for the answer? What is pure religion? and undefiled before God and the Father. What's the answer? To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. It's not first to keep himself unspotted from the world. It's first to visit the fatherless and the widows. So if you want to move the heart of the Father I ask everyone watching to 
pray a prayer with me and to open up your heart and maybe this is completely new meat for you well it was heavy meat tonight or this afternoon or this morning it depends on which time frame you're watching from but sometimes we have to get from baby food to real food right we want to grow up we want to be christians we want to be followers of jesus well this is one of the keys i give to you for free take care of the poor the needy and the broken let's pray lord we thank you for this time together we thank you lord that this is your heartbeat your heartbeat is everyone healed everyone set free and i do believe lord that the church has an answer for the problems of this world if it is known that 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 less than one percent of what christians gives goes to missions lord we want to repent from living a selfish life i ask you lord right now to burn away any form of living just for ourselves burn it away we want to shake off the doing nothing the laziness And Lord, as a son, as a daughter, not as a slave who has to do and prove, I'm not talking about that area, but as a son and a daughter, Lord, we, we want to commit ourselves to the broken, to the needy, to the poor, the homeless, the widowers, the lonely ones, the ignored ones. And Lord, there are millions in the West, in the North, in the East, in the West, in the middle, in our street on the corner maybe a meter from your house between you and the wall there's a family in need forgive us Lord that we have five six closets full of stuff well maybe an hour drive from us there's a family in need without clothes open our eyes Lord open our ears and Lord, we don't, want to, we don't want to be just moved with compassion. Move us with compassion. And we promise you, Lord, to put compassion into action. Specific now in this time. When there are millions of people hit. By the coronavirus. There are people in Africa wait for hours in line to get a little bit water. There are people in different other nations of the world fight for a little bit rise. We think right now about the grasshopper plague going over East Africa. There are millions of people suffering from hunger. Lord, you gave us the answer. I pray, Lord, that every Christian on this planet Earth will wake up and do something and release finances release time release their giftings in doing something for the group you love so much in jesus name amen amen well it was wonderful to be with you today and we would love to hear your response. If you have questions about this message, I know it was a radical, little bit heavy message, but it will really help you. I promise you, I mean, if you want breakthroughs in your life, serious, start doing this message. And give us testimonies. We want to help you in your life to bring this message into a practical way. And let us know where you are and, and how we can help and how we can support and pray with you. And thank you again for watching and before we go we would love to sing one more song with you and uh we're going to worship the lord and we cannot wait to be with you next week next week we are back with you in another harvest fields international we cannot wait to share the word with you worshiping with you 
And please share this link. Please make this Harvest Fields International online community known to people. We know that our friends from Palau, they are inviting people into the Philippines. We got a report two weeks ago that more and more Jewish people in Israel are watching in their homes. That's, that's amazing. We got, we got incredible testimonies from that. And we have people from Indonesia watching and Singapore and uh, Azerbaijan and so many nations. So thank you so much for being part of this online community. And you can help us to grow into more homes and more people by sharing and, and announcing that at every Sunday we are live. And we're alive for you to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to encourage you in Jesus name if you watch and you don't know Jesus please go to choose for Jesus uh, it's a beautiful website it's on your screen right now and uh, this beautiful website you can actually pray the prayer you can fill in the contact form and we will contact you we will pray with you we will help to find you with church in your neighborhood God bless you it was an honor to be with you and see you next week bye bye let's sing together Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, is my song. You are good. You're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song, let the king of my heart be the fire. Sign my bed.